And with us now in the studio is Dr. Majid Fatoui, Chairman of Neurology Institute for Brain Health and Fitness. Doctor, thank you for being here. My pleasure. It's good to see you again. It's been a few years. And we want to focus on brain health. Obviously, the first thing we all think of, the thing that we all fear, is Alzheimer's disease. I read a quote from you recently that said that maybe a fifth of uh, dementia cases are actually Alzheimer's. As people grow older, there are many different reasons why they become demented. When somebody becomes demented in their 40s and 50s, it often is pure Alzheimer's. But when somebody is in his 80s, there are probably 10 reasons why the brain has become smaller, one of which is Alzheimer's. And that's what's cutting edge. We have discovered that there are many reasons for the brain to become smaller in older people, which then causes dementia. You just published uh, new research on this in uh, Nature. What did you find? I found that there are at least a dozen different causes for the brain to either expand or shrink. One interesting point, when it comes to brain, size does matter. You do want to have a bigger brain. Um, it turns out that... Uh, well, let me stop you there for a second. Because females have smaller brains than males, but equivalent intelligence. Yes, it's not the size that you begin with. In other words, uh, an older person, uh, some people may have bigger brains to, to start with versus others. Is the brain that you start with and what, it, what you end up with. It's like okay. the size of your muscles or So it's else. relative size. Relative size, right. correct. So um, you can increase the size of your brain with certain activities. There are at least three things you could do to make your brain, Jeff, bigger. One. It's about time. Let's get started. <laughs> well, recent studies have shown that increasing fitness increases the size of hippocampus. Hippocampus is the part of the brain from memory. It's the size of your thumb. You have one on the right, one on the left. So fitness, increasing fitness, is one of the best ways to grow new neurons. That's what I find so fascinating. If you go to the gym and exercise, you will see that your hippocampus will grow in a measurable way within three to six months. We have a, a slide there that shows the, the blue area, I guess, is the hippocampus. Yes, you can see on the right top and bottom pictures the hippocampus being circled in blue, and it shows how hippocampus has grown with aerobic exercise over a three-month period. This is absolutely fascinating to think that our brain can grow new cells when we actually are exercising in the gym is fascinating. Why? What's the mechanism? Because we're not bench pressing with the hippocampus. Well, that's a billion dollar question. Hippocampus has this um, unique capacity to grow cells which is unique to hippocampus versus the other parts of the brain. Somehow hippocampus can grow more cells to increase its own capacity when people exercise. It has to do with growth factors. We think there are some growth factors called BDNF. It could be because of new blood vessels. What other techniques would help grow somebody's brain? Okay, the other thing you probably do is to keep your brain active. One study showed when medical students prepare for their final exam, their hippocampus grows in size significantly, enough so that researchers can see on MRIs before and after they prepared. So the second way that I recommend people to increase the size of their hippocampus is to try to memorize things every day. When you meet someone new, memorize their names. If you have new phone numbers, don't just put it in your iPhone, memorize it. And the third way that we can increase the size of our hippocampus is to reduce the stress and try things such as meditation. So well, here's another slide. This is uh, meditation and its effect on the hippocampus. What happens here? I must say, I find these things absolutely fascinating. I've been in this field almost 30 years now. And to think that things such as meditation can increase the size of your hippocampus is just mind-boggling. This slide shows what happens to people after they meditated for eight weeks. The control group in blue did not show any difference in the size of the hippocampus. The group that meditated for eight weeks had a noticeable increase in the size of the hippocampus to the point that could be seen on an MRI. We're not talking about uh, microscopic changes. We're talking about macroscopic changes. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about memory loss or maybe memory gain, you can give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. Um, what is normal for, for people as we age? Should we expect there to be some fall off in, in our abilities? Yes. Several different studies have shown that our hippocampus, the part of the brain for memory, tends to shrink by 0.5% per 
per year after age 50. So every 10 years is about 5% smaller. This is considered average. Now people who have a healthy lifestyle may have less of this shrinkage. Those who have poor lifestyle have more of this shrinkage. Which brings me to the next point, which is there are many things you could do to shrink your brain. One way would be to be overweight. There's an inverse relationship between the size of your belly and the size of hippocampus, on average. You're kidding. I'm serious. It's really amazing that several different studies in different countries have shown that people who are obese, on average, have a smaller hippocampus than those who are not obese. And it's also the usual suspects in, in terms of uh, normal, healthy diet, getting enough sleep, stress, that sort of thing? Yes. What is new is that we have known these factors are bad for the brain. What's new and cutting edge is that we have discovered these factors impact the size of our brain. And what happens over time, by the time we get to our, let's say, 80s, many different things have piled up. If we have, ha if we have had a lot of good things, our hippocampus will be plumb, and we will not have dementia. Several studies have shown that those people who have a bigger hippocampus will not become demented even if they have Alzheimer's disease in their brain. They'll show no signs of the Alzheimer's disease? No signs disease? of Alzheimer's disease. This is a study published in different journals that show the size of a camp is the key factor to determine whether or not you get, whether or not you get demented. Let's take some phone calls. This is Joy in Baltimore County. Joy, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Um, I was wondering, um, I'm 73 years old and my elders are in their late 90s and over 100 and they've never had a senior moment. They sit on the telephone and wait for me to have a senior moment at my age. And I was wondering if there's any talk about all the chemicals that we're introduced, that we have in our daily lives, if that's having any effect. Joy, terrific question. Thank you so much. I think it's true that many chemicals may impact our brain and our brain health. But I must say the chemical I am most concerned about is cortisol, which is the stress hormone that goes up when you're stressed. Um, I think it's uh, best to have a good diet, healthy diet, eat your blueberries, um, lots of fruits and vegetables, and avoid too much alcohol or too much uh, coffee, walnut, other nuts are good for you. Um, so you want to have a healthy diet, but the chemical that I worry the most is actually cortisol, which is endogenous chemical you produce when you're stressed. Flip side to that, are there any chemicals, natural or artificial, that would have a beneficial effect? Yes. Well. If you're talking about chemical in a broad term, I think you're talking about nutrients that are good for the brain. Sure. The best brain food is DHA. It's an omega-3 fatty acid that's particularly good for the brain. I have done some research on this myself, and I discovered that people who have higher DHA level are less likely to get demented. And a recent study showed that people who have low DHA level have smaller brains. So that's uh, fish oil, flaxseed, that sort of thing? The best thing to get is to get the DHA in its pure form from eating fish. Uh, salmon is a very good source uh, for fish. Um, if you're a vegetarian, you can take algal DHA. One study showed that people who consume algal DHA for six months perform at a level about three years younger. Uh, other sources would be food that are fortified with DHA. Let's take another call. This is Peter in York County, Pennsylvania. Peter, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Thank you, doctor. The, uh, there are right brain, left brain exercises, uh, doing things like puzzles, and there's set game that's a right, right brain uh, exercise, as I understand it. Do you uh, place any stock in these? Thanks very much. I think it's best for you to stimulate both sides of your brain. And one of the best ways you can stimulate both sides of the brain is dancing. Uh, when you do crossword puzzles, you're more likely to activate the left side of the brain. When you do creative work, such as art, you probably are activating the right side of the brain. You want to cross-train different, cross different parts of the brain, and dancing is one of the best ways to do that. How do you study all of this? 
Um, in, in terms of technology, I, actually, let's, let me hold that for a second and let's talk about what you brought with you, um, which to be honest is a little bit, <laughs> a little bit creepy to have on the, on the desk. These are actual uh, human brains that have been plasticized. Yes, these are examples of two brains, uh, one of which is from a patient who died with dementia, another healthy brain. The big difference between these two brains is the size a, pa a person with dementia has a small brain. A person who is healthy has nice full brain. You see these gaps here, here? Once upon a time, there was brain matter here. And for various reasons, this brain has had atrophy and it's much smaller. So the hippocampus is down in there somewhere and presumably yes. it's also been affected. Exactly. Hippocampus sits inside the temporal lobe, deep inside here. Again, it's the size of your thumb and sits deep inside the brain such that you can't see it from the outside. And you're right, the hippocampus would be much smaller in this brain compared to this brain. Uh, let's talk to Phil in Washington, D.C. Phil, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Uh, hello. Um, my mother suffered uh, kind of a uh, dementia starting in her 80s. And I'm currently 67, slightly overweight. And I'm starting to experience this phenomenon of whenever I go for a specific word, whether it's a name or an object, I'm going directly for that and I can't get it. Uh, a few minutes later, I'll probably remember it. But this is uh, really scaring me. And it's, it's, the sense is, is this difficulty with individual words a sign that I'm going to go like my mother or is this normal? Phil, thanks very much. For what it's worth, you sounded great on the telephone. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yes. The big mistake most people make is to assume if they have memory problems or if they have word finding difficulties is that they're going to develop Alzheimer's disease. It's a huge mistake. In someone who's overweight, the most likely diagnosis is obstructive sleep apnea. People who are overweight and snore at night and feel tired and sleepy during the day suffer from a condition we call obstructive sleep apnea. This is really a dangerous condition that increases people's risk for heart attacks and strokes. And this is a condition that would cause word finding difficulty and memory loss. So my, my suggestion to someone like him would be to, be, uh, to get checked for sleep apnea and stop worrying about Alzheimer's disease at this age. There are at least 15 things he can do. He can increase his fitness, he can watch his diet, he can uh, uh, focus on relaxation. There are many, many things. Uh, in my Neurology Institute, I provide a personalized assessment for each patient. A person may have insomnia, another person may have um, sleep apnea, another person may have too much anxiety, another person may have uh, diabetes, and each person has many opportunities to improve uh, his or her brain and make it bigger. Someone told us uh, once that there is a distinction between uh, yeah, everybody forgets the car keys or misplaces something or forgets a word in Phil's case. There was a distinction between um, having that sort of forgetful moment, uh, but then once reminded or once you find the keys, you remember what it was or having placed the keys there versus never bringing that memory back. That's Anything true. to that? That is absolutely true. Patients who have dementia, uh, have no recollection of things they've forgotten, even when they're reminded or prompted. Right. When you tell them that we had that conversation, do you remember? Even when you provide prompting, they will not remember. And they often repeat the same question four, five, six times, and they forget they asked that question before. Let's take another call. This is Vita in Baltimore County. Thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, my question is, how does sleep uh, relate to their memory? How does sleep relate to memory? Very good, thank you. You need to make sure to sleep uh, seven to eight hours a night. Uh, remember I mentioned to you that um, you know, exercise can increase neurogenesis, increase the number of new cells in the brain. Insomnia has been associated with a decrease in number of uh, cells in hippocampus. Sleep is one of the most important factors to determine the size of your brain. Uh, let's talk to Al in Sussex County, Delaware. Al, thanks for calling, go ahead. Yes, I was uh, concerned. I had a question regarding uh, high corn fructose syrup and, uh, you know, the, the problem we're having in the last 30 years with that and sodium. And is this having a correlation and an effect uh, on, on these younger people that are having dementia? We're seeing children with problems and, 
you know, weight gain and all that. High corn fructose syrup and sodium. Al, that thank you very problem? much. High fructose corn syrup. A lot of people point to that. Is there anything to it? I think uh, it's important to avoid glycemic index, which means too much sugar at once. And it's important to avoid obesity. Teenagers who are obese are, have a smaller brain than teenagers that, who are not obese. Obesity is a major problem for the brain. And it's the obesity that's a problem, to my uh, knowledge, and not so much the specific fructose or glucose. What's uh, disputed among your peers? Are there areas uh, of research that are controversial where there are perhaps disagreements? Absolutely. This is one of the best questions I've received in a long time. Because um, for the past 20 years, there has been an overemphasis on the pathology of Alzheimer's as the cause of dementia in the elderly. Now we are beginning to appreciate that Alzheimer's pathology, the plaques and tangles that cause damage to the brain, are only one of the many things that shrivel the brain and make it smaller. Obesity, sleep apnea, diabetes, sedentary lifestyle, these are all the other things that impact the size of the brain and determine whether or not someone is sharp or someone is demented. Many uh, researchers focus on amyloid. They made vaccines against amyloid and clinical trial after clinical trial failed. And some researchers have moved on, but others are still dwelling on the fact that amyloid is the key to curing Alzheimer's, which I respectfully disagree. You have a memory boot camp coming up. What's the agenda for that? Yes, um, uh, I have worked with the US memory champion, Nelson Dellis, to put together a one-day seminar, which is gonna be held on June 2nd at the Maryland Science Center. And in that seminar, we will talk about all the factors that determine the size of our brain. But more importantly, we will show people how they can memorize long lists and improve their memory. We all have the capacity to have an excellent memory. But unfortunately, most people don't even try. We will show people how they can improve their memory with simple techniques. Do you think the, the um, in, in just half a minute, the, the techniques that the memory champions use, where they all tend to visualize, I believe, they construct a visual environment and place the ace of spades here and the two of clubs there, um, does that build the hippocampus? Well, um, medical students who prepare for exams do have a bigger hippocampus. One of the things I would like to do with Nelson is to measure the size of hippocampus now and as he prepares more and more to, do, to check his hippocampus again later. The one thing I've done in one of my patients, I obtained an MRI at baseline and after my three months of brain fitness program, her hippocampus has grown by 5%. This is incredible because remember, our brain shrinks by 0.5% per year after age 50 and this young patient, who is 42 years old, has had a 5% increase in well, her size of hippocampus. We could all use another 5%. Dr. Majid Fatoui is with the Neurology Institute for Brain Health and Fitness. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for joining us for Direct Connection, and have a good night.